And let me tell you, sister, something concerning, concerning disciplined kids, disciplining, disciplining kids. Now, when we men dealing with the kids, y'all just shut up, man. Just be quiet. You understand? When we dealing with the kids and them, you all be quiet. Don't tell them, oh, why are you doing, why are you, especially if you know some, some of you brothers, you all marry some of these, you, you all marry sisters that come in with kids, that got kids. You understand? And when you try disciplining the kids and so forth, some of these sisters be jumping in front of, jumping in front of you and like, and questioning you in front of the kid. You understand? When, listen, we are men. We know how to deal with men. We know how to deal with young boys. You understand? We know what they need. And when we deal with them, we don't hate them. If I yell, if, if, if I got a stepson and I yell at him, that don't mean I hate him. You understand? Because that's what sisters, oh, you hate my son. You know, you hate, like I'm telling you, some things we have to be very careful. You know, you had this one brother, he used to be on his, his, his son. I ain't going to say stepson, I say son. You understand? Because once we marry you, sister, that's our son now. You understand? That's our daughter now. You know? So the brother hard on this little dude. You know, the brother, the little dude was acting up, smoking weed with his friends and stuff. So the brother like, okay, I'm going to do a scared straight. So he had him at the school. He was like, yo, you think you tough? Like this little dude think he tough. So all the brothers was, they was, you know, you know what we men do. Like, yo, you don't know what life is about, man. Like, you know the scare straight, the, the, the show? Yeah. There so brothers in the school was doing that to him. The mother heard about it. She got upset. She called up all the deacons. She called all the stuff up, complaining the brother this, the. We're like, oh, man. No, we got, you know, like some things if we, like because the way how the congregation grown, some things we cannot allow. You know what I mean? Because some of you same sisters going to turn back and sue us. We know the deal. You know what I mean? So now we got to be like, brother, you can't do that at the school. You understand what I'm saying? You know, we got to be like, bro, you know, <laughs> you know, we know that's what he need. But listen, the moms don't agree with it. You know what I mean? So just fall back from that. Because some sister, some of you sisters, when we are disciplined, discip when the men in the in the house is disciplined, disciplining your your your, your child, whether it's the, the girl or the boy, you all get in between the discipline. And now, when the child become older, now the child turn into a demon. And now you're like, oh, I should have never interfered when you was, you know what I mean? Now the child is a demon. Having sex with white kids, putting it up on the internet. I'm not gonna call names. This is what this is what is going on. Because you sisters, you are getting our way when it's time for us to discipline these kids. You understand? These are the things that are happening now. Now the kids, now the kid meet 15, 16 year old. Now it's kind now it's harder for us to deal with that with that boy. Because he wanna bump chest with us now. You know, he think he could size, size us up because he got some muscles. And he starts smelling himself. You know, you brothers know what I mean by smelling. And in the islands, we got a term. We say, yo, you're smelling yourself. Like when a, when, when a, when a child starts having pubic ears under their arm and they start smelling themselves. You understand? Like, you're smelling yourself. That's why, you know, so, so when they become adult um, teenagers, you know, so that's why I'm saying, sisters, when it comes to kids, leave us to deal with them, man. Leave us to deal with them. When it comes to, don't get me wrong, some brothers is crazy, man. No, this is why I got to put disclaimer. I always got to put disclaimer. Because we had different instances with brothers abusing their kids. You know what I mean? And I ain't talking about kids from another, from another relationship. I'm talking about the biological kids. I'm talking about beating them so bad, leaving marks on their body. You know what I mean? I'm talking about some abusive stuff where we have to tell this brother, listen, you got to go. 
We had to kick him out of the congregation. And listen, we telling you brothers something. You all abuse your kids. Guess what? We're going to be the first one to say call ACS on him. I just want you all to know that. You understand? We're going to be the first one to call Popo on your ass. You know, your kid come up in here with his jaw broken. Why is the kid jaw broken? Because it's either we call ACS on you and you get some help that way. Or we come up in, or, or, or we come out of the spirit and hurt you. Which one? You understand? So I rather choose the other way. Because when you hear certain things, it hurts you inside. When you see a little child whoop so bad, you see in belt marks with bleeding, you know what I mean? When you see stuff like that, it hurts you inside, you know? So it's either one or two things you call, let, let Esau deal with it. Esau got his court system to deal with stuff like that. Or we deal with it, and guess what? Sometimes we could go, you could go to jail. You know what I mean? Because the same sister going to say, yeah, he did it. <laughs> the same sister that come to you and, you know, you know, you know they're going to say, he did it. You know, so that's why I'm saying we always have to use balance with certain things. And I also always got to put disclaimers. You feel me? When it says... To, when it says to discipline your child, it's talking about what? Um, let me get it on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Keep Surat reading. chapter 30 and verse 12. Bow down his neck while he is young and beat him on and beat him on the sides while he is a child. And beat him where? On the sides while he is a child. And beat him on the side. On the side, meaning on the buttocks. The thick part when he's a child. Yo, I remember when I was young, I probably was like 11, right? I got some stories for you all. You know, so I did bad in my test. So I already know I'm about to get a, a whooping in school. Because the teachers whoop you in high school in the islands too. You know, so, so yo, I put, the, I put a book. I put a book in the back by my pants, right? <laughs> That was the trick. You understand? So teacher said, put your hands on the blackboard. I know I'm about to get it. So I put my hands on the board, and the, he, it's like a whip. So teacher was like, he hit me the first shot. He go, po! You know, when you take a stick and you hit the book, you're going to be, you know? So she like, what's in there? <laughs> so <laughs> he put out like two books from behind there. <laughs> I'm like, man, I ain't about to get my ass whooped right now, man. That thing hurt. But um, but the point is, is that that's where we used to get licks on the side, you know, on the buttocks. You understand? So, so, so it didn't say, it didn't say you gonna drum kick your your, your son or your daughter, or you gonna punch them in the face. The scriptures didn't say to do that. That's abuse. It's abuse if you punch a child in, in their face. You know, it's, a, it's abuse if you kick your child in, in, in his chest. You know, all of that, that's abuse. The scripture says when they are young, beat them on the side. Not when they become a teenager, you're trying to discipline them. No, you, those are you sisters that came in here with kids, and your kids are teenagers, right? No. Hope just pray to the most high, that kid is godly. Because if that kid is not godly, that kid going to be doing all type of evil stuff and there's nothing we going to be able to do. We could try with that kid. Like I had, we had many situations in here with young kids. You know what I mean? Young kids that's up in here and they, and they just demons. They ain't trying to repent. You know, in high school, having sex. Giving blowjobs on camera and the principal, everybody's seen, and the sister's supposed to be an Israelite. You know, these are the things that these young kids, some of you young kids up in here right now doing. Going to high school, and this is what you all doing. You understand? And you parents, some of you all know what your kids is doing. And you all then come to us to say, listen, my kid need help. You know? You got this one sister come to us trying to convince us that her daughter got raped. 
You understand? Never knowing her daughter, she was like, what, 15, 16? She went with the dude and she had sex consensual with the dude. You know what I mean? We like, sister, call the cops and you all deal with that. We not getting involved. Because we, we saw the video, it was a lie. She was not raped. Sister, how you end up in the dude in the dude apartment? He took my phone and I was following for my phone and all kind of foolishness. Listen, y'all is not going to get us caught up in them. Y'all got wicked, evil kids and y'all hiding them kids and y'all don't want to come forward and say, listen, my kid got issues and my kid need help. You know, I wrote it. It's best you sisters just come and let us know that. Don't hide them. Because I was young. I could see spirits on kids. I know which one of my kids got spirits on them. I'm like, mm, I can keep an eye on this one and that one as a deacon item. If anything ever happened to me, see that one right there? <laughs> keep an eye on that one. You understand? <laughs> you know? You know, so I know which one of my kids, mine, might swear to evil. I know which one the force is strong in and which one the force is not strong in. <laughs> the force is strong in that one. You know? <laughs> that one is more on the dark side. <laughs> you know? Well, that one is more what we call Lord Set. That one is that one, that one is more to um Dark Vader. Doc Vader got his hold on that one. You know, so you got to know the spirits that's on your kids. You know what I mean? You got to know the spirits on them. Like my daughter, she only, what, 12, 13. And I talked to her about certain things. You know what I mean? I talked to her about certain things, things that I like, yo, listen, you go there, you hide, you have sex and stuff like that. Listen, I'm going to disown you. I just want you to know. You understand? Like you got to, like I, that, that, I have to talk to them. You understand? A lot of you brothers and sisters, what you all don't do is talk to your kids. You, you think they don't know what sex is? Especially you marry ones. You all go inside and you all close the room door and then they hear it. <laughs> you all think your kids are stupid? They not stupid. You know? You know, my, my, the little, littlest one used to come knocking on the door. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Mom, why is the door closed? <laughs> what are you all doing? I used to be like, what the hell is wrong with this dude, man? He got the dark side on him. You know, little dark Vader. Yeah, like, get out of here, man. Stop knocking on the door. You know, but that's what they do. So you all don't think they naive and stupid. Kids is not stupid. Once they see that door lock and the music up high, they're like, mm, they doing something. Uh-huh. So you brothers and so you gotta explain that to them. Like, I tell them kids, I tell my kids, I asked my son one time. I said, you know what sex is? He said, Yeah, that's nasty. I said, Why you acting why you acting like that, man? What you talking about? Because he, he's trying to say that to throw me off. You understand? That's what he's trying to do. So I'm like, listen, man. Sex is not nasty. You know, it's something that a man and a woman do when they get married. You understand? You know, because the kids and them, they already know and they know these things. I remember when I was a little boy, I used to do, do certain things when I was like 9, 11 years old. My mind was on the dark side. You understand? So... So don't be naive when it comes to your kids and talking certain things with them. You know what I mean? Fathers, don't be scared to talk to your daughters concerning certain things. You feel what I'm saying? You know, I tell my daughter straight up, I said, that's a hoe. That's a hoe right there. I be driving, yo, you see that hoe right there, Zion? Yeah, she a hoe. You see how she... <laughs> I don't... I, my daughter, I, I let them know, yo, that's a hoe. I'd be like, why is she a hoe? Because how she dressed? I say, yes. You know what I mean? Like, you can't be scared to talk certain things and let your kids and them know what. Because if you don't, guess what they're finding it out? 
on the school or on the television. All these movies show so much evil. When you're watching television, it shows so much evil. You see so much evil on television, man. You know, I was watching this, this movie um, yesterday. And this little kid calling two females mommy. This boy, I'm like, mommy, mommy and mommy, two mommy, lesbian stuff. In all the shows, they show these stuff. And guess what all these lesbian and homosexual stuff is designed and aimed to? It's an aim at us. It really aim at our kids. That's why you got, what's that dude? Um, Dwayne Wade, that's why his, his little son talking about, he, he's call him, call him Zaya. Zaya or some crap like that, man. You know what I mean? Because of, the, because of what the media been pushing hard on these young kids. You know, so not just you just got to guide, guide your, um, your kid mind against being defiled and losing their virginity at a young age and so forth. You got to guide, guide your, your son and your daughter mind against homosexuality. You know, you see your son walking, so you're like, yo, why you walking like that, man? What you was watching the other day? Why you talking? Why you moving your hand like that when you talking to me? Like, yo, don't move up your hand like that. Don't put your hand like that and move up your hand like that. I uh, didn't. Uh, yo, what you did? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You as men, you got to see these things. You know, your son making too much hand gestures and stuff like that. Something ain't right. Watch and see what he's watching and stuff like that. And check that spirit right there. Because it's going to grow. Because we are war, man. And I'm telling you, Esau, through the, through the television and the movies and all of that, that's how they're attacking our kids. You know? Anyways. So, as I said, sisters, leave us to correct our kids. Do not get involved. When we deal with our son certain way, we might deal with him rough. We might deal with him. <coughs> we might yell at him or talk to him rough. It doesn't mean we hate him. You understand? That don't mean we hate him. Sometimes kids need to be talked to in a rough way, especially young boys. They do not need to be baby up. You baby them, they grow up being soft and emotional, like how you sisters are. You know what I mean? It's okay for you all to be emotional and the way how you all are, but you all, what you all does a lot of time, you all grow up, your sons to be effeminate and emotional. That's why some of these brothers are always complaining that I offend them. You know? They can offend me. You know, I got a letter, like four page, man. Somebody sent me yesterday. I read like ten lines. I said, I can't read no more. That thing is too long. I offend that dude. You know, I'm like, yo, what the hell is wrong with just make it short? A short sentence on what I did. That thing was so long, I started reading I'm like, reading, 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 reading. I'm like, yo, you know? I'm like, I can't read all this, man. I'm like, yo, whatever. I, 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 I just leave. <laughs> I couldn't read it. You know? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother, that sent me that long, long thing on, um, on Facebook. What do you call it? Um, private Messenger. That sent me that book for me to read, how I offend them. I ain't reading all of that. You know, I'm not reading all of that, so... My bad, brother. You know what I mean? If I did anything that was wrong to offend you, I'm sorry. But if I probably correct you or something like that, then you just offended and emotional to hell with you, man. You know, that's it. You know? Like, you, as I said, brothers, you all need, like, listen. The first time I meet the bishop, he called me the devil. I'm like, I was like, yo, why this dude calling me the devil? <laughs> like, you got the devil on you! I had him waiting... I had him waiting downstairs for like half an hour. You know what I mean? He in front of my crib and I'm on I'm on East I'm always on Eastern Parkway or somewhere and he sit down there waiting for half an hour to pick me up to take me to the, the the feast. So I just came in the truth. So you know, so I jump in the taxi, I went over by his crib, you know, with just like four of us at that time. He like, You got the devil on you. I like, yo, what why is he calling to me? I like like, oh, whatever, you know what I mean? What the food and the drinks? <laughs> you know? Because I didn't really, you know what I mean? I'm like, but imagine if I was emotional, I would have been like. <laughs> I 
got the devil. <laughs> Brother, you offended me. You told me I got the devil on me. I am Satan. You know? But anyways, so sisters, listen. When we deal rough with brothers, when we talk rough to brothers, you know, to your sons, do not get offended. You understand? The scripture says in every generation, we get weaker and weaker. You know, and, and you brothers that grew up with your mom, you all are very emotional, sensitive, emotional brothers. You all got to get rid of that spirit, man, straight up, you know. So from there, um, where I was at, go back. So we're dealing with, so we're dealing with stumbling block. Now your kid could become a stumbling block. As I said, we met a lot of brothers and sisters in this troop. Most of the sisters that they put their kid on a pedestal. You know what I mean? And the thing about it is that they don't correct their kid and they bring their kid up inside here. Now, if you bring your kids in here, your kid's going to get corrected. You understand? And what a lot of you all do, you all get mad at us when we correct your kids. You know? Now, I know, now we got this one sister. She here. She's still here. We corrected her kids. She, and, she, and, she was mad at me for three years. Three years. But she good now, though. She good now. You understand? But it took her three years to overcome that because we corrected her kids. You know what I mean? You know, kids was on Instagram talking to boys and all type of dumb stuff. You know what I mean? That was when we really just started dealing with the issue with kids and sex and you know, her house was the first, her family was the first we really had to deal with issues like that. You know, so she got upset. She didn't talk to me for like three years. You know, but, you know, she got it. You know, her mind is right now. You understand? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, yo, you remember? He was mad at me for three years. She's like, yeah, man, I was mad at you. So now we laugh about it and stuff. But, you know, so that's good, man. You know, when you see somebody go through something and overcome it. You understand? So from there... Um, I want you to keep on reading. Sirach chapter 30 in verse, in verse 3. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. So if you teach your son, you're going to grieve your enemy. So, okay, so your son could become an idol, as I said. All right? So from there, go to Proverbs 23 and 13. Proverbs chapter 23. In verse 13, withhold not correction from the child. Read on. For if thou bearest, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. So if you correct your child, if you beat him with the rod, he's not going to die. You understand? It says don't withhold correction from your child. As I said, some of you sisters, don't hit my baby. No, 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 no. You ain't correcting my kid. You understand? The scripture says, listen, the only way these kids and them could learn is by correction. God know the type of people he created. The only way we learn is by him correcting us, much less our kids. You know, I don't know about y'all. I'm hard-headed. When it comes to, yo, listen. You know, the among, when it, I literally scared of getting an ass whooping. When I was a young man, I'm like, you know, <laughs> that's, a, that's what made me, that's what made me go back to school and learn and stuff like that, man. You know, um, read on. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Keep on reading. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. So you all understand that? If you beat him with the rod, you're going to deliver his soul from where? From hell. You know what I mean? This is what God says concerning your kids. But the key thing is to do it when? When they are young. And another key thing is to do it when you're when you correcting them, you got when you you gotta whoop them where? On the side. You understand? Now you you Americanized black woman that don't want to follow this, that's on you. Your kid gonna grow up to be a demon. You understand? And you know, you're gonna bring him up in here, and you know, he's gonna be a demon and we're gonna get rid of him. That's, what, that's just what it is. We're going to tell sister, your son got to stay home. Because he a demon. You understand? So, so that's, where, that's where we at with that. You know, but that's what the scripture says concerning correcting a child. 
Okay? Um, let me get Ephesians 6 and 4. Ephesians 6 and 4. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So what does that mean? Ephesians, it says, provoke not your children to wrath. When it says provoke, how can you provoke your children to wrath? To provoke your children to wrath, to wrath of who? Huh? To the, of the most high. The way how you provoke your children to wrath of the most high is by you not correcting that child when they're young. You understand? Because when you don't correct your child, he became, there's a scripture that says, uh, the, he, became, he becomes headstrong. And he do what the hell he want to do. He running up in here, pushing other kids down, fighting. Be like, yo, who kid is this? Does the parents, does they go, they don't have no control over that little dude? He punching other kids in their face and stuff. <laughs> you know? So, and we can't be having that. Listen, you can't control your kid. Listen, you cannot control your kids. They, listen, you got, you got to keep them home until you could control them. You understand? Because I'm not whooping none of y'all kids. You only gonna get me locked up. For real. I ain't whooping none of your kids. Back in the days when we were smaller, I would have whooped your kids. You understand? Back then, me and Lava, we were like, we gonna whoop your kid. Your kid come up in here, he get an ass whooping. But now, you're, the way how you Negroes think today, you all gonna sue us. You know what I mean? <laughs> you all going to sue us. If you are about to sue the Kamalakai. He whooped my kid behind. I'm suing his behind. Oh, I'm calling ACS on him. I don't want nobody hitting my kid on the side. So mm -mm, I'm not going to be disciplining. I ain't going to whoop none of your kids behind, man. Telling you all. You all do that on your You all do that yourself. You know, so read on. And, and you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So when you bring them up in the nurturing and admi admonition of the Lord, meaning you correct your kid and so forth, that shows that um, that's how you do not provoke them unto the wrath of God. You understand? Because remember what we read in Proverbs 23 and 14, uh, further up, it says... Um, if you whoop your child, you're going to deliver his soul from hell, man. You understand? Now go to Colossians 3 and 20. The book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Go to Sirach 7 and 23. Sirach, chapter 7, and verse 23. As thou children, instruct them, and bow down their neck from their youth. And do what? And bow down their neck from their youth. So if you have children, you got to bow their, here it is again, it says bow down their neck from their youth. Meaning bow, they got to learn to respect you from their little kid. You understand? Don't wait till they 17 and 16 and now you're talking about respect me. You know, you got some, I, I, some you got, as I said, you got, don't, you got some sisters inside you disrespecting their mother. You know what I mean? The reason why you sisters disrespect your mom is because when your mom, when you was young, your mom's never whoop you behind. You got no fear towards her, thus you have no fear towards God. Thus, you're not going to fear that brother that you say you, you leave her to go marry. You ain't going to fear him neither. You ain't going to respect him. You know? You have no fear towards your parents. You ain't going to have no fear towards the most high. And you're going to grow up being stubborn and rebellious. You go, you, you get married, you're going to disrespect your husband. You know? That's just what it is. You are... You don't respect nobody that have authority over you. Your parents and them have authority over you. You don't respect them. You gonna respect your husband. So you, that brother, you brother that married that sister, you an idiot. 
She don't respect her mother, but yet she gonna respect you. She left her mother house, run away to be with you. You going you, but yet she gonna respect you. You understand? So y'all keep playing games, man. Where we at? Sirach chapter seven verse twenty three. Read on. As thou children, instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. Bow down their neck from their youth. Make them bow down from their little kid. Make them bow down and humble themselves to you. You understand? Read on. As thou daughters, have a care of their body. Okay, and have a care for your daughter's body. You understand? Meaning you got you to gotta make sure your daughter teach her, man. Teach her, son, teach her from young. You understand? The way how society set it up today is if your daughter is... is if your daughter is a virgin, it's like she's fronting. Oh, you a virgin? Ew. Like, that's something nasty. Like, you know? Because in society, most sisters today, they have lost their virginity at a young age. They are defiled at a young age. You know, but read on. As thou daughters, have a care of their body, and show not thyself cheerful toward them. And don't show yourself cheerful towards them. What does this mean? You know, some of you sisters, you all like to be friends with your kids. Be friends. You know, no. You can't you can be like that with your kids, man. You know what I mean? Otherwise, eventually, they're going to end up disrespecting you. You understand? There must be a level of respect between sisters, you all and your daughters, you all and your, and your sons, with us brothers and our, and our kids. There's got to be a level of respect. You know, like, me and, my, me and my kids, cool. I joke around with them and stuff, but they know not to cross me. You understand? You know? Read on. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou, thou have performed a weighty matter. All right, so from there, I want, you to, I want to show you all, I'm going to show you all how Samuel, no, how Eli, I'm going to show you all how you can make your kids your kids an idol. Go to go to First Samuel two and twenty two. Now, as I tell you all, man, this, don't, it's either you all take it or not. Those of you all that get offended, I don't really don't care, man. You know, those of you all that come up in here with kids and we try talking to you all and we try correcting them kids, you sisters, man, and you all get angry. You all marry brothers and brothers try try helping your son. And you watch at it as abuse, and he ain't even hit this, hit the kid. You know he just, you know, come on. Now the kid is messed up in the head. Now you want to know what the hell is going on. Now you saying, damn, I should have listened to my husband. Well, I'm telling you, sisters, no, listen. Just to let's do our job when it come to the kids, man. You know. You think we are righteous, man? Let us do our job when it come to them kids. You know, so um, read that for me. Verse Samuel, chapter 2 and verse 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. So Eli was an old man at this time, and he heard that all that his what? His sons did unto all Israel. What his sons did to all Israel. All right, read on. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. What is that talking about? So you had these priests. They was having sex with all the women that was coming to the church. That song like Christianity right there, man. That's Christianity right there. You understand? That's, that's, that's that Eddie Long, Creflo Dollar. Creflo A dollar. You know, that's that's what's going on in Christian church right there. You understand? In this Christianity church. So, read that again, what our forefathers was doing. Them are the same people that's back today in the Christian church. You know, you have sisters coming in the... No, 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 no. We got that stuff going on at, at um in the BHI groups too. Where the, where the priest is having sex with us all... All the females that come to the congregation. Oh, brother, she going to be, that. you see her? I, I got Gibbs, man. She my third wife, okay? I, I'm going to make her my third wife, okay? All right? 
having sex with all the women that come up inside it, but they do it under the guise of, okay, you my, you my third wife, you my fourth wife, you my fifth wife. That's what they do. That's what the B-H-I do. Black Hebrew Israelites. You understand? That's what they do. The same thing that Eli and his sons do. But they use the guys as, you're my wife number one, you're my wife number two, you're my wife number three. You understand? Having sex with all you, all the sisters that come up. All the sisters that come to the tabernacles. <laughs> and all the sisters that come to the school. <laughs> Sister coming to, 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 to learn some scriptures and she end up getting, you know what I mean? Anyways. Let's go. Keep on reading. Read that again. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 22. You all think the evil stuff you all seeing that happening today is just happening today? No, it used to happen back then. Keep on reading. Now Eli was very old and, and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And how we laid with, how they lay with the woman. Let me tell you all something. In order for them to lay with the woman, guess what? The woman had to be they had to be the farming tool. That's what I want to say. They had to be that. You understand? You see, they had to be that way because guess what? A righteous sister going to be like, I'm not sleeping with you. You know what I mean? I don't care. I don't care you a, you captain so-and-so, a deacon so-and-so or so on. I'm not sleeping with you. You know, God going to kill me for that. But these sisters, the, these some the same thing with some sisters today. You know what I mean? They don't care. You know, we got one sister used to be amongst us. She don't care. A couple sisters, to think about it. They leave and they go hook up with these dudes and what they do. You know, they living in their house, in their father's house, and the dudes just come in and get it, knocking them up and getting them pregnant. You are my third wife. You are my third wife. You know, so it's the same thing that you see Eli doing right here, man. Same thing. You know? Read on. Same thing you see Eli's sons doing. My bad. Verse Read on. Verse 23. And he said unto them, why do, you, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all these people. So the people was talking. They was like, man, these dudes and them, they sexing up all these women these in the congregation. You know, read on. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Because these men was judges, leaders. They were judges, leaders, and sleeping with all the damn women in the congregation. And these women, these women, they was, I don't want to say something. You know what? Let me get that scripture this um laden with sin. Yeah, let me, I just gotta read this. I just gotta read this because I say I wanna say, but I'm gonna say. Yeah, so, read that scripture for me. Second Timothy chapter three and verse six. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women Holy, laden la with la sins. La laying what? Laden with sins. Read it again, read it again. And lead captives, silly and lead captives, silly women, laden with sins. And lead captive who? Silly women. Silly woman. What does it mean by silly woman? Huh? Just look up the term silly. I do not want to say it. You understand? This is what God says was taking place. You had brothers holding captive, silly woman laden with sin. Silly woman laden with sin. Look up the word silly for me, man. Silly. Silly woman laden with sin. So these women got all type of sin all up in them. You know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can you read silly for me, please? Silly. Having or showing a lack of common sense or judgment. Whoa. Absurd, absurd, and, and foolish. Foolish. Okay, so a lot of these sisters that you see got got um captured. That's why it says captive. 
yes. that become captives. <laughs> ah, man. You know, this, you silly woman, the scripture says you have in lack of common sense. You ain't got no damn common sense. You understand? You are foolish. You know, that's you simple sisters where a brother could come up to you and be like, sister, you're so beautiful. You know, look at your eyes. You know, your, your eyes, you know, it's just glow. You know what I mean? And, you know, say some dumb stuff and you're like, hee. You know, that's some of you sisters, man. You know, so brothers come and lay their game, lay their mat down, and you, you done drop your drawers. No, you wife number four. You wife number three. You that silly woman, that foolish woman, that stupid woman, that absurd, no sense of judgment, you are that woman. You understand? As I said, we had a couple of them amongst us. They left now. You know, I brought this out the other day. You know, you got this one idiot sister, stupid sister. We've been teaching her the scriptures. She saw this dude on, on Facebook. He said, oh, he's cute. You know, go meet up with the brother. Wake up in the middle of the night. The brother, Yashala, is over her with his rod in his hand. He like, you look so beautiful, baby. I just can't help myself. What, this, what, what did the silly woman did? She spread her legs. She got pregnant. She got a baby. You understand? And I hear nothing but no marriage. All I tell the sister, you can't be amongst us no more. You got to go. You know what I mean? We taught you better than that. You want to be a hoe? You got to go. You know? For real. So that's that silly woman. You know what I mean? And that's what these brothers do. And these brothers is camp leaders. Leaders over camps. Leaders over men. Brothers that you see on Facebook always talking smack to us about multiple wives. How you I see is off. You know what I mean? You talking about one wife, this, that, that. You brothers weak. Da, 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 da. That's the same brother. Same brother with his rod in his hand. <laughs> over the sister. I'm like, this is some niggas, nigga bull crap, man. You know what I mean? And you all expect me to respect these dudes. Some of you sisters, you all stupid. You all could go and follow behind that foolishness. You know what I mean? You all could go. Go. All right, so read that scripture for me again, man. You all could go and be held captive. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. Let them captivate you with they, with they, with they, with they gain. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women. And lead captive silly women. Laden with sin. And these women usually full of a bunch of sin inside of them. You understand? Stupid woman laden with sin. You understand? I do not want to read those right there. You know, I ain't trying to get that threats against me. You understand? So take that dumb. Brain dead, all of that stuff. Now, I ain't trying to do that, man. Come on. Because, you know, it's just a small percentage of sisters is that way. You know, in my dealings, it's just a small percentage. I don't see a lot of sisters like that. You know, a lot of sisters, a small percentage of sisters and that, you know, they be bugging, man. You know, for real. So from there, I want you to go to, <clears throat> why did I go here? I'm dealing with kids, right? <laughs> oh, Samuel, okay. I was dealing with Samuel and his his wicked kids. And I just happened to go to these women that was having Samuel's sons sleep with them in the congregation. Loose woman, silly woman. You know what I mean? So, keep on reading. First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 24. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. And they Keep on reading. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, 
Thus saith the Lord, did I plainly appear unto thee, unto the house of thy father, when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation. You know And honorest thy sons above me. And what? And honorest my sons above me. And what? And honorest thy sons above me. So this is an example. Eli honor his sons above God. You understand? He honor his sons above God. His sons was in the, in, there were some gangster priests when you read the history. They was taking the best part of the meat. You know, see, they was doing some, some nig stuff, man. They was sleeping with all the women in the congregation. And Eli heard about it, but he never shut it down. He never removed them from that seat. You understand? Why? Because when you keep on reading, so, so Eli ended up loving his sons above the most high. His sons was wicked. They was evil. And he ended up putting his, his sons above the most high. You understand? That's, 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 not, that's something that we should not do. You know, none of you sisters, y'all don't do that. You understand? You brothers don't do that. Don't put your kids above the most high. You put your, your kids and them could become a stumbling block for you to stumble in this suit. Yo, what's up, Kabash, man? In the cut, you don't know, Bridget. <laughs> we got Orlando in the house. You don't know. Captain Kabash. You know? So read on. And honor is thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my so, people. So what Eli was doing, Eli was profiting from the meat. He made himself fat. Eli was fat. He was big. You understand? He was obese. He was overeaten. You know? Read that again. And honor is thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my with people. With the chiefness of all the offering of Israel, my people. The offerings that was being brought, the lamb and so forth. You know, they was taking the best part of it and they was... Yo, they was big dudes. They was fat. They was glutton. You understand? When you keep on reading, it told you that, that Eli, he was so big and heavy that he sat back in the chair and he fell back and broke his neck. You know? So the Mosai killed him. But keep on reading. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. For them that honor me will I honor. So if you honor the Most High, he's going to honor you. All right, read on. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Read on. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thine father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. So you ain't going to have no old man in, in, in um, the house of Eli, in his house. Read on. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. Read on. And the man of thine whom I shall not cut off from them, cut off from mine altar shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee that that shall come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phineas. And one day they shall die both of them. So, so these Eli two sons was got put to death. You understand? For all the evil they was doing, having sex with the females in the congregation, taking the best part of the meat, and they was giving it to Eli, their father. And he never correct none of these things, so God killed him, and God killed his sons. You understand? So that's what happened more time. When you put you put your kids in, in, in ahead of the most high, guess what? As I tell you all something, you know, those of you all know that know the deacons and the office the deacons and the bishop personal information you all know what it is you all know we ain't just saying things that we ain't been true you understand you all know that you all know you all know um the bishop had to have an older son none of you all never saw him right a decision he had to make which was hard you feel what i'm saying 
You know, Deacon Lava. He got kids. He got a bunch of kids that you'll never see. You know, he had a decision that he had to make years ago that was hard. Same thing with Deacon Malachi. Same thing with Deacon Asaph. You understand? You know, they all got kids that they had in the world that they had to make decisions when they came to this truth and they're trying to teach these kids God laws. You know? So don't think we're telling you all some that we don't see ourselves and we decisions that we didn't have to make ourselves. You understand? My kids are still young. I'm praying that none of them go to the dark side, but if they do, I got the, the lessons from the, the other deacons and them to learn from. You understand? So from there, um, I'm, I'm finished with children. Let's use friendship. Friendship, that's another stumbling block, man. Friend, S-H-I-T. I ain't going to say friendship. French, mm. you understand? That's what you, a lot of you all got up in here, man. You all ain't no real friend. You all fake friends, man. You know what? What that's what's that? Um, child, the, the, this song is called "Fake Love." You know what I mean? Y'all got that fake love. You know what I mean? Some of y'all got that fake love. Y'all don't have that real love for your brothers. Y'all ain't got that real love for your sisters. You got that fake love. You know, and you know that by when you see things happen, you see how people operate. You see how people move. That's how you know that a lot of brothers and sisters, they got that fake love. You know, so from there, I want you to go to. Damn, I want to deal with idols. And go to Sirach 6 and 7. 6 and 17. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6 and verse 17. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship all right. So if you fear God, that's the first and foremost thing. You're going to do what? Direct his friendship all right. You're going to direct your friendship all right. What does that mean? You're going to direct your friendship all right? Meaning the person that you're going to have around you to call your friend, that friend that you have around you going to be godly. You all understand? You're going to make sure the, the, the friend you got around you is not that person that always getting in trouble. That person that hate everybody. That person, imagine, like, you know, like a lot of times, you know, you, you could tell somebody by the people that they got around them. You know, you know that sister, you know this one, these women that says that always around hoes, and he's like, you say, hey, ho. She like, I'm not a ho. So, okay. You, you know, you are wrong, hoes. You just like hoes. But you saying that you not a hoe. It's like these female that does the slut walk. You all know what that is, right? Every year in New York City, they got, I don't know if they do it out of state too. Yeah, in New York City, they got a walk they call the slut walk. It's basically... Female saying, I could dress as a slut, but you men do not supposed to watch at me as a slut or call me a slut or want to desire me for sex because I dress as a slut. You know what I mean? You all understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? You know, you out there with your ass showing, your vagina showing. I wanna, when a man look at you, that's the first thing run through his mind. Sex. Sex. You know? So they're saying... You should not rape me. You should not assault me because I dress as a hoe. Because you got some dudes that, you know, assault females and stuff like that. You got rapists. You got perverts out there that just, they just looking, you know, and, they, and that's what they like. You know, so you dress like that. You got people that are sick. So you telling these sick people with mental demons that okay, you shouldn't you shouldn't treat me certain ways because I look certain way. You know what I mean? Come on. You know? So you got some dudes been locked up for years, they just came out and here you yeah, you walk <laughs> here you walk in half naked. You know, these brothers this brother just came out from doing ten years for rape. You know what I mean? And here is you walking, going down the street with your ass showing. And you doing the slut walk and talking about, 
Don't judge me by the way how I dress. I dress as a slut, but I'm not a slut. Yeah. Oh, find it, find it. So my thing is, our people got issues. The men got issues. You know, you got a lot of them rapists and sexual offense, sexual, um, what you call it, deviants out there. You know, and you sisters should not be dressing a certain way. You, you all must, the Bible says you must, you must adorn yourself in modest apparel. You understand? Amber Rose and all of them, they want to do the slut walk and they want to be, um, they want to do the, guess what? They are walking in the street late in the night looking like a slut. They always got security around them. So the dumb black ma- black woman that want to follow behind that, they are the same ones going to get kidnapped and raped. And they body part going to be online for 100000 That's real. That's real life. You understand? Black woman is being kidnapped. They are being used as sexed. How to say? Sex slaves. Human trafficking. That thing is real. That thing is real, man. So you women, stop. Pull your head out or you're behind. I'm talking about the woman in the world. Okay? Not, not you righteous sisters in here. You all already did that already. You understand? But that's who I'm talking about, man. You, you know, these sisters that you see going and take part in the slut walk. Yeah, and all of that foolishness. This world is getting worse and worse. Things are serious out here, man. You know, you all go online and see how much woman is missing every day. Go online and see how much of these young sisters is missing. How much of these sisters is missing that, that they are kidnapping and using them as sex slaves and, and, and selling their organ online for 100, 100 Gs or half a million dollars. Think about it, man. So you all want to be in La La Land, you all stay in La La Land. I want to be able to dress as a slut that nobody could stop me. And they shouldn't objectify me. Come on, man. Let me get that scripture. Oh, read that scripture again where you was at. Sirach chapter 6, verse 17. Whoso feared the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So if you fear God, you're going to direct your friendship aright. Meaning you're going to make sure you got the right friends around you. You know, even, uh, even inside here, as I tell you, you know, let me get that. You know, you, you know a lot of people say, I'm not that way. I'm not that way. Why are you treating me that way? Why are you, why are you talking? Why are you look at me that way? You know, no, l- let me show you what the scripture says. Um, go to Sirach 6 and 7. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Oh, no. Go to Sirach 13 and 16 first. Let me show you something, man. This is what I see. And it never, it never fails. You know what I mean? Read that real quick. Sirach chapter 13, verse 16. All flesh consorted according to kind. So all flesh consorted according to kind. Everybody, everybody be around their kind. The people that they could relate to and, and so forth. All flesh... Keep to their kind. Read on. And a man will cleave to his like. And a man is going to cleave to his like. The reason why I'm around this brother is because I like this brother. Me and him got a lot in common. You understand? The reason why I'm around this sister because I like this sister. Me and this sister, we got a lot in common. You understand? That's my friend. We got a lot in common. You understand? So you can't. Say that you are wrong a sister that's a hoe. Or you are wrong people as hoes and lesbians and all of that. But, you know, you like, that's not me. Come on, it don't work like that. You know? And everybody going to be a wrong they like. Meaning, you like who you like. You understand? That you're the person you will relate to. You know, and I see this happen all the time. Like me, I'm not going to hang around somebody that I don't relate. Me and them don't relate. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be around this brother and we have nothing in common. We don't relate to each other. I can't talk to him about a certain thing because I'm different. 
My mind is different. You understand? His mind is different. You know, we might not have a lot in common, so we might not be that close. You understand what I'm saying? You know, but then you might have other brothers that me and them might have a lot in common. You know, so we could relate to each other. So I'm going to cling to that brother because me and him is close. You feel me? So now I'm going to use it on the flip side too. Now, this is one thing that I always see. Remember where it says every flesh will what? Read that again. Every, every, all flesh consorted according to kind. All flesh consorted according to kind. All right? All flesh consorted according to kind. You know? Now, I'm going to show you all some. Now, over the years, one thing I realized, right? Like, if somebody had a, have a problem with me, guess who they're going to have around them? Everybody that got a problem with me and hate me. They all going to come together. Look at it. Look. Check it out. Everybody that speaking evil against IUIC. You all see they all come together, right? They all come together. They all teach different doctrines. They all got different doctrines. They, some of them even hate each other. But they come together. Why? For the common enemy. IUIC. Oh, you can't stand IUIC. I can't stand them niggas neither. We friends. We could be friends. You know? Oh, you can't. You can't. Oh, you don't stand Deacon Malachi? I can't stand him neither, man. That do get me on my nerves. Let's be friends. We friends. Now, one thing I see a lot of times, too, is I see people get corrected, you know? And I watch and I see, okay, let me see who they going, who and who going to be in that little circle. And that's that show me who and who is bitter, you know? Everybody that had an issue that been corrected and might think they was done wrong with or they was dealt wrong with, all of them come together. I said, hmm. Oh, that's the bitter circle right there. The bitter click. All of them. All of them bitter. Never got over their correction. All of them hate leadership. You understand? As I said, at more time, we just sit back and we just, we just watch. We just watch and let everything play itself out. You know? So the scripture says, every creature going to what? Read that scripture for me, man. All flesh consorted according to kind. So all flesh going to consort to their kind. You're going to stick to the person you like. Okay, read on. And a man will cleave to his like. Read on. What fellowship hath the wolf with the lamb? So you a wolf, what you going to be doing with a lamb? You go around a lamb, what you going to do? You going to eat the lamb. You understand? So what fellowship is the wolf with the lamb? Read on. So the sinner with the godly. So it's the sinner with the godly. So you can't say... Okay, I'm a godly man. I'm directing my friendship all right. But then you are wrong this person that this person, you know that person ain't right. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. All flesh consort to their kind, man. All flesh consort to their kind. You know, now we, we had a couple brothers up inside here. They end up leaving. You know, all of them had the same thing in their mind. Now they went and they set up their own school or whatever. All pr you know, I, I just leave that in the hands of the most high, you know. But from there, I want you to go to jump back to where you was at again. Before that. Yeah. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 17. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So if you fear God, you're going to direct your friendship aright. Because let me tell you all some concerning friendship. You know what I mean? No, I lose a lot of friends in this truth. I just saying you all know straight up. I had a lot of friends in this truth. I had deacons that was friends with me, that I was friend with, that I lost. I had officers, captains that I was close to, that I lost. You understand? The reason why I lost that friendship is because... Read that again. Whoso feared the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. Because I had to direct my friendship aright. You know what I mean? You can't say 
you my friend, and me and you close, and you speaking evil at a bishop. You know, that's my teacher. You understand what I'm saying? You know, and you called me and you, you my friend. Like, it, it, it don't work. It don't work like that. You feel what I'm saying? It don't work like that. Now, if I'm still friend with this dude and he's speaking evil about the bishop, about the bishop, what does that say? It says that I'm giving ear to the evil that he's speaking, correct? Correct? Yeah, that's what that's saying. That's saying that I agree with the evil that he's speaking. That's what that's saying. You know what I mean? So read that again. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So if you fear God, you're going to make sure you got the right people around you. You understand? You're going to make sure you got the right people around you that fear God. Okay, read on. For well, as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Because the same way how I am is the same way I want my friend to be. You know? The same way how I am is the same way I want my friend to be. If you got a friend, you know, you can't say my friend... You use one way and your friend is another way. No, the same way you are, how you supposed to be? You supposed to be a man of that fear the Lord and serving the Lord. The same way you want your friend to be. You know? Read on. That's it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so from there, I want you to go to Sirach 6 and 7. The book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend... Prove him first. And how you know that friend is after your heart? You got you got to prove that person, man. You know what I mean? Because you got a lot of fake, fake, fake friends. People that not really your friends. I don't had a lot of fake friends inside this truth. As I said, I came to the truth. I said, yo, I'm in the truth. I'm learning the scriptures. I'm good. You know? And then I start realizing I got a lot of fake people amongst me. I'm like, damn. I'm like, in the world, dudes was keeping it real, man. You understand? You come into the truth thinking, this is the truth. This is the truth. And you running across and you meeting a lot of fake people. And the thing about it, in the world, I just cut them off. But I can't do that in the truth, you know? <laughs> you got to Christ say, forgive them. You know, so you can't even be like, okay. Because you know, I, if I, the way how I was, if I see you fake, I just don't mess with you. That's how you just, you know? To avoid the foolishness. Or I see you fake, I don't mess with you. But in the truth, you fake, I still got to forgive you. And still deal with you. And, and leave it in the Lord's hand. It's either you get your spirit right, or the Lord is going to move you out of the way. You understand? So the scripture says what? Read that again. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So if you got a friend, you got to prove your friend first, man. You know what I mean? You got to prove your friend to make sure your friend is on the same wavelengths as you. Your friend believe in the same thing you believe in. Your friend is a righteous man. Your friend, if he see you going off, he going to correct you. He going to help you. He going to pull you back. You know what I mean? Your friend, he's not going to allow you to go off and, and go into some evil. He going to correct you. You understand? So, a friendship could also be a stumbling block. Reason why? Because a lot of time you come up in here and you make friends. And the friendship be fake. You understand why? Because let me show you some. Go to... Go to... Keep on reading. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. Don't be hasty to credit nobody. I'm not hasty to credit none of you brothers and sisters in here, man. You understand? Read on. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. Because somebody, some people is your friend. For what? For his own occasion. For their own occasion. What does that mean? Some of y'all, those of y'all that got money, don't let people know you got money. You understand? Keep that thing to yourself. You understand? You get money, you got some, you, some brothers and sisters find out you got money. They want to get close to you. You understand? They want to borrow money from you. Let me tell you, let me be clear with something right here. Real, I'll just make it short. Let me be very clear. Very, very, very clear. When it comes to lending money, there's a scripture concerning that. 
Um, is in Sirach. Yeah, yeah. Get that and read it for me. Now, when it comes to lending money, those of you brothers and sisters inside here, you all do that? Do not get us involved in that crap. You understand what I'm saying? Any one of you all lend anybody any money and that person don't pay you back or that person deal even with you with that money? You and that person, you all deal with that, that smack yourself. You ain't going to put that on us. You feel what I'm saying? Because I borrow nothing from no man. Scripture say, oh, no man, nothing. That's how I roll. That's how we all training all you brothers to think. But some of you all, you all want to think about business opportunity. Or oh, this brother got money. Or oh, brother, this business deal, you know, this business plan. Let's go into this business together. And now when the business ain't work out, now you mad at everybody. You mad at the brother. You mad at, you, you, yo, listen, you know how much brothers in here I did business with, you know, and, and it didn't work out. I came to the point, you know my brothers I lend money to? I, I gave this one brother five G's. I gave this one brother 10 G's, you know, this is, you know, this is coming up in the truth. You understand? Like you always want to help brothers. You, oh, but this brother, like your business deal, you could go in with him. You know what I mean? And it never work out. And I'm like, this nigga. <laughs> and then I remember what the scripture said. But you know how much money I lose dealing with brothers? But I watch at this as just, I say, you know what? The most I going to bless me. Forget about it. So now I get the, the way how I roll now, I don't lend money. None of you ask me to borrow no money. If you need money, the most I'm giving is a 500. That's it. Anything, and you could have that. But anything else, you go to the school. That's how we roll now. That's how I roll in now. If you need help with your rent, the most I could give, I don't lend money. I'm going to give you like 500 tops. You got to have an 800 credit score for you to, for you to give it to them. A uh, year? You're running credit checks. I'm talking about me personally. <laughs> Everybody is different. You understand? Everybody. I ain't lending nobody no 10, no 5 G's, no 10 G's. I'm not lending nobody no money no more because I've been doing that right to I'm going to, I just give people, I don't give you. You need help, I'm going to help you. You feel what I'm saying? And also, you know, if I don't have it, enough to, like, I'm going, okay, that's what the body is here for. You know, we are here to help each other. You understand? So I'm just saying, me personally, I'm not taking on all that burden to go all, you know what I mean? When we all could work together and make it easy on that brother and that sister. You understand me? You see? That's instead of, instead of me alone get this brother X, Y, Z, we all could come together, father us each, and help the brother. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not just a burden on one person. You feel me? No, you understand? So, so that's where I'm at when it comes to lending money. If it's over 500 I don't lend money. I, you know, you need 500. I give you 500. I'm not going above that. You understand? <laughs> you know, me and you friends, me and you cool. You need, you need help with something. It better be under 500. <laughs> it got, it better be 500 and under. I give it to you. I'm not going to lend you. Like I, you could hold that. I don't need it back. You need any more? You could go to the school. The school got you. <laughs> you know. Fill up, fill up. We got no. If somebody need help, we do got um, we got the arms form where you fill up, and you know you get help. You know once you get help, you know we get the arms form where you fill up. But we, the only thing is that you got to show you've been giving offerings, right? And you got to show that you've been with us giving offerings, and you you know and you've been laboring in this in this work. Otherwise, you know, what's the sense? You come and you say, oh, I need help. Uh, I need two months rent. And two months rent in New York is like three G's or four G's. And we say, okay, um, let's help the brother. We look and we like, yo, he never help us do nothing. He just come every Sabbath and sit down. He don't help. He don't teach. He don't teach. He don't go on the street and teach. He, he don't even, he never, he been here for four years and he never gave one dollar. So the other brothers and sisters that needed help, he never helped them. So why we must let the brothers and sisters help you now? 
You know what I mean? Then some people get mad at us because of that. Oh, they just help certain people. You know, if you ain't, if you, we ain't stupid, you are not going to take advantage of us. You're not going to come here and, and just with your hands out like, okay, um, I need, I need, I need this for, for rent. I need that for help. I need this. And, and we just stupid. Okay, we help you. We love. Jesus is love, brother. Okay, here, here, here. You got one state I'm over that I'd be doing that. I'm not going to call names. But every week, somebody need, need assistance. And it's not no small money. You're talking about 4Gs, 5Gs, 3Gs. I need help. I need I need assistance. You know? So you you know you brothers that got living in the house, they live in lavish. I'm like, bro, this this ain't that type of club, man. This ain't the Christian church. No, not even the Christ the Christian. We ain't stupid. You know, we got first thing, we got financial. I'm going off a topic. I'm going off off a topic, okay? <laughs> we got financial um advisors, meaning what? In each school, we got financial advisors, meaning if you, if you fall into a bad situation, you know, we have brothers to help you if you um, budget and get things together. You understand what I'm saying? We don't just give you, okay, I need 5Gs to pay my rent. And we like, okay, here's the 5Gs to pay your rent. No, we be like, okay, why did you fall into this situation? You know what's going on? You know, do you know what well, you, you you are you living beyond beyond your means? So we look and see. So if you gain living in an apartment and the apartment is three thousand dollars a month and you working for two thousand dollars a month, we like, oh brother, you can't afford that apartment. You know what I mean? You know, we you know, we could help you, but it's gonna be a bandage. Listen, we need to fix this. You need to downsize. You need to, you understand? So this is what we got the financial advisors set up to do, to help you so you don't fall back in that situation again and again and again and again and again. You understand what I'm saying? It's all about using wisdom because some people, let me tell you what some people do. They come once, we help them. They come twice, we help them. And when we don't help them the third time, they're angry. You know what I mean? Like, oh, la, la, la. You know, I think we, we suspend we suspend a brother from, from New York. For the year we gave the brother over, let me say, over seven G's. And the brother in the congregation borrowing money from brothers and sisters too. So we like, hmm. We like, yo, this is some evil stuff. We said, bro. You got to go. You can't be doing that. You know, we help you, you know, over over one year. When, when we check up, we're like, damn, that's, that's over eight Gs. Like, yo. And then he's going to brothers and sisters personally and asking them personally to borrow money. Is he giving back these brothers and sisters that money? So that's why I, 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 I say to you all, when it comes to borrowing money, and lending money, don't get us involved in that. If you lend somebody some money and he, he don't give it back to you, that's on you. Guess what? I had to learn the hard way. It happened to me. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I lend money to a lot of people, never get it back. <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's a brother in the truth. No, sometimes even you a brother in the truth, you borrow some, it's hard to, to give it back when you don't get it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And I understand that, you know, the reason you ask for the loan is because I'm broke. You know what I mean? Like this, like, hey, I had this, this one dude asked me one time, he said, yo, he said, um, he said, can I borrow, borrow some, borrow 500? I said, okay. I said, are you working? He said, um, no. I said, so how are you going to give me back my money? He said, man, you know, yeah, you know, I'm supposed to get some coming up soon. Duh, duh, duh. i like, bro, you know, I, I'm, you're not able to give me back the money. I don't give it to you, but whenever you get it, give it back to me. But I know that you cannot give it back to me. You understand what I'm saying? You know, so that's why we got these pro. That's why we got 
um, the, the assistant f in the school setup for those of you all that need assistance, that really fall on assistance, that really fall on hard times. Not brothers and sisters that are trying to live off us and think we're stupid. You feel what I'm saying? We are not stupid. You are not going to come and use us and use brothers and sisters inside here. You know? So let me get read that scripture concerning Lenin, man. Sirach. Sirach to the 29, verse 7. Many therefore have refused to lend for other men's ill dealing. Because, because of what somebody did to that brother, he borrowed money, never give it back. No, you say, you know what? I'm never going to lend nobody no money again. That's where my mind is. I'm never lending no money again. So I learned from some brothers, they did me dirty. You know, I ain't going to call names, but I'm never lending no money again. You understand? I'm going, <laughs> if you need some, I'm going to give it to you. If I got it, I'm going to give according to I'm able to. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to give, I'm giving offerings to the school. So you're going to get, if you need help, you're going to fill out the form and you get it from the school. But I'm not taking it on my personal um yeah, I'm not I'm not doing that no more. Cause I to so cause some of you brothers, I to look you all taught me a lesson. <laughs> you know, read on. Read that again. Many therefore have refused to lend for other men's ill dealing. Because of some of you all deal ill with people when it comes to lending and borrowing money. You might deal ill you might deal ill with somebody. You understand? So sometimes that person will say, yo, I'm not lending no money again because of what? Because of what one person did. You feel what I'm saying? Read on. Fearing to be defrauded. Fearing, fearing to be defrauded. He not going to give me back. You know, read on. Yet have thou patience with a man in poor estate. But you got to be patient with a man in low estate. That's where my mind fell to. I said, you know what? Because I know the brothers and them person. I said, they're not evil. They just in a low estate. You know what? I forget about the money that I gave them. You know what I mean? I watch at it as a loss. You know, read on. And delay not to show him mercy. And if you lend somebody some money and he's in a low estate, though the scripture said don't delay to show him mercy. You understand? Don't delay to, to show him mercy. You understand? Read on. Yea, yet, that yet have thou patience with a man in poor estate and delay not to show him mercy. Help the poor for the commandment's sake. Help the poor for the commandment's sake. That's why I said, if somebody's poor and they need help, I will help them. You know what I mean? And, and not just that, also we got certain things set up in the school to help them. You know? Read on. And but I'm not going to lend nobody no money. You understand what I'm saying? I'm done with that. I'm not lending nobody no money. It's best you come and you say, yo, Dick, let me hold something. You know, I'll let you hold some. You know what I mean? But don't come and say, yo, I want to borrow. I hate that word borrow. I'm not lending nothing. You understand? I'm not lending no money. You know, if you need to hold some, yo, yo, dick, yo, things is tough right now. Yo, you think you let me hold a 200 or 300? No, if I do lend you, that's my own personal thing. I can't turn around and start complaining and like, yo, man, I lend this dude 200 and he never gave it back to me and da 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 and, and try, you know what I mean? Because that happens sometimes and the scripture talk about that. Sometimes you borrow something from somebody and you fall on such a hard time, it's hard to give it back because you don't have it to give it back. You feel me? I know the person, they painting an evil image of you all over the place. You know, I lend this person so and so and he never gave it back. The, the among the brothers I said I lend money to, and I never got it back. You know, the reason why the most I bless me in what I do is because why? Because I said, you know what? I'm going to count it loss for my brother's sake. And that's what I did. And, and the most I keep setting up opening doors and blessing me with much more than what I lend that brother. You know what I mean? But read that scripture for me. Help the poor for the commandment's sake. Help the poor for the commandment's sake. Read on. And turn him not away because of his poverty. Read on. Lose thy money for thy brother. Read and on. Thy friend. So he said, lose your money for your brother or your friend. You understand? Your friend is in need. Your brother is in need. Help him. Help him according to you are able to help him. You understand? But my point is, as I said, I don't lend. I rather help. I don't help. I don't lend. Because when you lend, you're expecting it back. 
You feel what I'm saying? Why lend a poor person something and that poor person, you know he can't give it back to you? You feel what I'm saying? So that's why I said, I'm, I, I'd rather give a brother some than to lend him. And I know that he can't give it back to him, me. Because now I'm looking back, I'm waiting for it, and I'm like, yo, this dude ain't give me my money. I'll just lend him, man. Yo, this dude is a nigga. You know what I mean? No, I'm speaking evil of this man. You know? I'm like, yo, you know I lend this brother so and so and he never gave it back to me? For real? That's some nigga. Sh like, for real? Damn, that man is evil. You know? Um, did you talk to him and find out why? Is he going through certain things? Like, what was, you know? Like, you know, <laughs> I gotta tell you. So read on. Loose thy money for thy brother and thy friend. And let it not rust under a stone to be lost. I mean, and what? You just get it in the bank. You know what I mean? Read on. Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High. So your treasure, when you, where how you lay up your treasure is by helping your brothers. Meaning your money, your riches. You help your brother, your brother need you help him. When you do that, you're laying up treasures in heaven. You understand? you laying up treasure in heaven by helping your brother. You know what I mean? By even if you lend to your brother, even though he ain't give it back to you. The most high see that. You feel what I'm saying? And the most high know if he really just being a nigga or he just in some bad situation. You feel me? The most high knows that. Read on. And it shall bring thee more profit than gold. He going to bring you more profit than gold, man. You understand? Read on. Shut up arms in thy storehouses. Shut up arms in thy storehouses. That's what the blessing, the arms, the giving, you giving, you helping. You know what I mean? You helping each other. You helping your brothers. You know? It says, shut that up in the storehouses. Read on. And it shall deliver thee from all affliction. And what going to what you going to deliver you from affliction when you when you helping your brothers, man? When you helping your brothers, when you when you you helping your brother, you giving arms to your brothers. Your brother poor. And you help him. You know, you might lend him. And he says, when you lend him, they might not be able to give it back on you. Is it in that same? Is it in that same? I start jump to verse 2, man. Verse 2. Lend to thy neighbor in time of his need. He says, lend to thy neighbor in time of his need. Read on. And pay thou thy neighbor again in due season. And pay thou thy neighbor again in due season. Read on. Keep thy word. Keep thy word, read on. And deal faithfully with and, him. And deal faithfully with him. He says to keep your word. If you tell somebody, listen, I'm going to give you this back next week. You know what I mean? Make sure you give the brother it back next week. You know what I mean? He says keep your word and don't deal to see. You know you can't give it back to him next week, but yet you still want to borrow from the brother. I tell you, brothers, hey, listen, you brothers that lend money, do not come to us complaining. You know what I mean? That's, it's on your power to give that man that money and to lend him that money. You understand? It's up to you, brothers and sisters. They come, Somebody come to you and want to borrow some money. If you never come to us and ask us, should I lend him the money? Because most of the time, we're going to tell you, no, don't lend no money. He need help? We, the school going to help him. You understand? We going to help him. This, I have to learn that the hard way. You know what I mean? He need help? The school going to help him. You know, that's what we got certain things set up in the school for, you know? Read on. Keep thy word and deal faithfully with him. Read on. And thou shalt always find the thing that is necessary for thee. And you're going to find it. You're going to always find the thing that's necessary for thee. Read in food, clothing, shelter. Read on. Many, when a thing was lent them, reckoned it to be found. So a lot of people sometimes, <laughs> you lend them some money and they think they found it. Like, you know what I mean? I found this. This is free money. You know? That's why I said, I don't lend. I rather just give you. You know what I mean? I rather just give. I don't lend. Because when you lend people money, create problems. You know, you start like, yo, where my money at? Oh, hey, um, can you find that, um, Stewie, Stewie? Yeah, 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 yeah. Find that thing for me. Find that thing for me. This is what happened, man. But Yeah, 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 yeah. So, hey. So re keep on reading. Many, when a thing was lent them, reckoned it to be found. It says many, when a thing is lent them, they think they found it. No, you ain't found that. I gave you that. I loaned you that. 
for you to give it back to me. Read on. And put them to trouble that helped them. Yo, I had this one uncle, man. I had this uncle. I used to ask the uncle, like, I go and lend him money. And I go and come and his name is Eli, right? It's so ironic. His name, my uncle's name is Eli. His real name, Eli. So I used to be like, yo, Uncle Eli, yo, can I get that money on lend you? He said, like, he stammered a lot, right? He said, what I tell you? So I get it, I don't get it, all right? Don't ask me again. I used to be like, damn, man. So I used to even scared to ask him back for my money that I lent him. So when I go to him, I used to be like, you don't, you don't kill like you, you get that money, f- you get that money, you get that money for me right now. And so I start yeah. stumbling and he used to watch me to be like, boy, what I tell you? I said, when I get that, I don't give it back to you, man. So months going down the line and I'm still like, so I'm like, man, he ain't giving me back none, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, but when he wanted, he used to come and be like, yo, come on, man. Yo, yo, I'll give it back to you, man. You know, don't worry, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, but when he after he after it's time for him to get it, give it back to you, like he cursing you out, man. You know, you scared to ask him back for what you loan him. You know, so keep on reading. Verse five. Till he hath received, he will kiss the man's hand. Okay, that's it. He gonna kiss your hand. He gonna be like, yo, thank you, man. Let me get that, please, man. Let me borrow that money from you. Come on, man. You know, but I, but read on. And for his neighbor's money, he will speak submissively. But when he should repay, he will prolong the time. He going to prolong the time. Read on. And return words of grief. And he going to tell you evil stuff. He going he gonna to make you grief. You even give him that money. Read on. And complain of the time. Be like, man, listen, man. That, yo, I need some more time, yo. Give me some more time. You understand? Read on. If he prevail, he shall hardly receive the half. So you mightn't even get back nothing. So, so read that. Sirach 8 and what? 20? 8 and 12. Read that for me. Sirach chapter 8 and verse 12. Lend not unto him that is mightier than thyself. So it says, don't lend to him that is mightier than you, okay? Like if you know a brother, you, you know, don't lend to him that is mightier than thyself. Read on. For if thou lendest him, count it but lost. You better count that thing lost, man, because if he's stronger than you. Like I can't lend Ezekiel some money and then come and say, yo, man, where my money, man? <laughs> Yo, you playing games with my money. Don't let me come see you. Because he's mightier than me. You understand? He might, you know, I can't, he might catch me a beat down. Like, yo. <laughs> like, yo, man, don't be asking me for no money again. You heard me? That's dead. You heard? <laughs> you see that muscles? So the scripture says, don't. Read that again, brother. Lend not unto him that is mightier than thyself. So don't lend to somebody that's mightier than you. I might have, you know, don't do that. You understand? You know, that's, a, that's, that's what the scripture says. <laughs> he might get you a beat down, man. So um, keep on reading. Jump back to where you was at and keep on reading. Sirach chapter 29 and verse 6. You all realize I changed up all the, the, the whole topic. I was going one way. You understand? That's the spirit. I got to, yeah, I'm going uh, next week. I promise I'm going to finish the class. I'm going to deal with woman. Anyways, uh, keep, keep on. Keep on reading. Sirach 29, verse 6. If you prevail, he shall hardly receive the half, and he will count and he will count as if he had found it. Read on. If not, he had deprived him of his money, and, and he had gotten him an enemy without cause. So sometimes when you lend, you get an enemy without cause. And you, because you don't want to give back the money, you know, you, that person ends up becoming your enemy. You understand? You know, with me, I lend you something, something, I, I usually I know brothers be in a bad situation. That's why I don't stress them back for it. You feel what I'm saying? Because the reason you borrow it in the first place is because you was in a low state. And I know if you don't give it back to me, is it in that same chapter there? Even though he don't give you back, he says the most I going to repay. Yeah, keep on reading. He had pre- deprived him of his money, and he had gotten him an enemy without cause. He paid him with cursings and railings. So some people pay you back with cursing and railings you know what i mean like yo don't ask me for no money man i told you i ain't got it right now yo it been it been two months man you know where my money but keep on reading and for honor he will pay him disgrace 
All right, read Sirach 12 and 2. And let me show you all this right here. As I tell you all, those of you brothers and sisters that got money, you lend money to anybody in here, don't, don't run around crying to us, man. Because you never asked us when you went to lend that money. You understand? You didn't come to De Deacon Malachi. Do you think I should lend money to this brother? Because we're going to tell you no. We don't care who it is. We don't care who it is. You know, we are against, you know, if you need help, the school is here. You know, read on. Sirach chapter 12 and verse 2. Read. Do good to the godly man. So he says, do good to the godly man. So those of you all that do give money to people or lend money, he says, do good to the godly man. If you do good to a godly man, read on. And thou shalt find a recompense. You're going to find a recompense. A recompense means payback. Read on, meaning that godly man, he's going to pay you back. If you help a godly man, he's going to pay you back. You understand? Read on. And if not from him. And if he don't pay you back, because what is that saying? Sometimes a godly man might not be able to pay you back. Sometimes, okay, he fall back on rent, right? No. He said, okay, yo, let me just to pay two months rent. I backed up. So he paid a two months rent, but guess what? He got to continue paying his rent. <laughs> and he got to, you know, and he got to build up back that money to, to give it back to you. You know, if so if you lend somebody two G's, they don't just come up back with two G's like that and give it back to you. They probably making three something a week, um, um, four some a week, five some a week. They got to save back that money to give you. Or they could say, okay, I'm going to give you 200 a month or something like that, you know, on a payment plan or something like that. But, don't like don't don't let nobody come to you and say, yo, let me borrow two G's, I'll give you back next week. You know, it don't work like that. We all be realistic. R rather send them to the to the school and let them fill the form up. And we, the school is gonna give them that money. You understand? If they've been helping in the body, if they've been helping other brothers and sisters that needed help. But if you ain't helping brothers and sisters that need help. You ain't giving no offering. You ain't doing quite. You ain't doing nothing in here. Don't expect us. Don't expect to get any help from us. I just let you know now. You know, just have to put that out there. You understand that you are not going to use us like this brother that been using us inside here, using some of you brothers and sisters. Keep borrowing money from you. All. You know, read on. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. But so it says, if you lend a godly man some money, and you ain't, and that man ain't give you back that money. He says, you're going to get a recompense if not from him, meaning if he is not able to pay you back, who's going to pay you back? Yet from the Most High. The Most High is going to pay you back. You understand? If you lend some money to somebody and that brother wasn't able to give it back to you, you understand? The scripture says, if that man is godly, the Most High is going to repay you. You understand? Read on. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. Nor to him that it, nor to him that giveth no alms. So if you don't give alms, there's nothing good could come to you, man. You understand? So the point is, is that those of you brothers and sisters, you all lend money inside here. That's on your own. That's on your. You understand me? That's on your. Don't matter who you lend that money to. That's on you. If that brother can give it back, you and him work some out to get that thing fixed. You understand? You all, somebody come to you, brothers, for money, to borrow, send them to the school. Oh, you back on your rent? You want to borrow two Gs? Okay, go to the school. Go fill the form out because we're going to help them, as I said. But all that personal stuff, you all, to avoid problems in amongst us, you brothers and sisters don't do that. All right? Don't be lending no money to no brothers. And, because, as I said, the brother might not be able to give you back. And you might not be spiritually inclined to say, you know what? The more size go and repay me. Next thing we hear, you running around the congregation. This brother owe me money. This brother did this. And I loaned him this money. He was back up on rent and he never gave it back to me. Now you running around the congregation speaking evil about a brother that you lend the money to. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody understand? Okay. All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.